Before I get started, I wanted to quickly say thank you to all the organizers and all the awesome speakers that were a part of this uh, bug bounty space. And I want to say good job to everybody for all the um, talks and all the slides that I've given us today. Uh, but as a part of this closing ceremony, I wanted to share my journey of how I have learned to get started in bug bounties and all the hurdles that I have to overcome in order to become comfortable and successful at what I do. So hi, my name is Ben Sadegapur. Most people know me as Naham Seg on Twitter and all other social media platforms. At the age of 15, I moved to the United States uh, with my mother, where she pretty much moved me here, stayed with me for a few months, and eventually went back home, and I had to learn how to do things on my own and kind of be on my own as an adult for the next three or five years of my teenagers. When you move to a new country, it's a little bit difficult because A, it's a country that I have no friends in, I don't know how to speak the language, so I had to learn how to speak English, make friends, and go through the entire teenagers and high school years uh, by knowing that in the back of my head, you know, I have an accent, I don't speak the language, and things that I have to overcome. I use that, uh, not knowing English, I use that as, a, as ammo and weapon for me to become better and learn English faster because my entire thing as a teenager was, I want to get good at computers. So when you pick up an international language, when the whole world talks in and speaks in, it becomes easier to understand other things because you have the whole internet in front of you. You can Google search for anything you want to learn and the answer is going to be in English nine out of 10 times. So given that I had a lot of times with no friends really in high school and I was still trying to figure out how to get through it, I used that free time either playing video games because we all need somewhere to find some peace and have some fun, but also I used it as a getaway or somewhere that I could dedicate my time and kind of escape everything that was happening in my life with something that I was passionate about. So high school was a little bit different for me than most people, but eventually I got to college where I could do the things that I wanted to, I could pick what classes I go to, I could pick what time I want to go to school, and kind of get into being in charge of my own life. And with going to college, what comes with that is you start to get into partying, you start making friends, you start going out, you kind of get these new distractions and you learn about a new life that you never knew about. So I had a few years in between where I completely forgot about computers. I got in the habit of you know, going out and drinking and partying with friends because that was a cool thing to do at the age of 19, 20, 21. So again, you know, being in college, you know, being a lost cause, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I kind of knew that I wanted to study computers, but unfortunately the school that I was going to didn't really have a strong computer science background or security background where I could learn hacking, I could learn about security and enjoy the things that I did. As a kid, I've always wanted to get into hacking, but when you come from a background of a conservative family, traditional family, they don't look at hacking as a, as a real way of making money and a living. In 2012, 2013, kind of hit rock bottom. I had a lot of things go wrong. Uh, a lot of it was because I was partying, I was put on probation, I uh, lost a few family members, lost some friendships. So this was a very important part of my life where I had to figure out Either A, I let these problems make me, or I make them into something where I could get in charge of my life again and kind of put all of that negative energy into something that I want to do. So back in 2012, 2013, through uh, school, I met a friend where uh, they were a part of a government-funded program where they would recruit students to either work for the government, like a state, uh, like a state, local state, or they were hiring people to go work for uh, Federal Reserve, banks, also the three letter agencies that are in the area. One of the people that was involved in the program uh, pulled me aside and was like, hey, I've seen you, you know, rant about hacking and how you want to learn about hacking. Have you heard of bug bounties? So this is where about where Yahoo was doing bug bounties off the their, off their platform on their own uh, and right after they stopped doing gift cards and they were actually giving out cash to the hackers to find vulnerabilities in their product. Being someone that used Yahoo Messenger and all of Yahoo products religiously, that was very, very exciting because A, I was, really, really comfortable with their products, and B, I would get to hack a company that I used as a kid and get paid from them. So when I found my first valid vulnerability, they emailed me saying, hey, we would like to acknowledge you, but in order to get acknowledged for this vulnerability, we need you to go and sign up on this website. And that website turned out to be HackerOne. So going on HackerOne, there was the Internet Bug Bounty for Perl, Python, and all these different frameworks and languages, but there was also Yahoo, who was only the first customer that I believe HackerOne had at the time. So from discovering HackerOne, I realized that there are other platforms out there like Bugcrowd and Synac that also do similar things. 
and they were all just getting started in the same space. So after discovering HackerOne and realizing that these companies are paying for you know hackers to find vulnerabilities, I came across a blog post written by Abraham. I think most people know him as Zigu on Twitter. You should definitely look him up. Uh, he just published a blog post on finding an RCE on an Asian asset of Yahoo, where it was a shop where you could directly inject some PHP in there and take control of that box and execute whatever commands he could. You know, reading Abraham's blog post, I really, really wanted to find a vulnerability just like him when I get an RC on Yahoo. It was no longer about the want, it was the need that I had to learn to become better in order to be able to find the same vulnerability. Throughout that journey, I tried anything I could. I found a bunch of XSS, I found a bunch of other vulnerabilities. But one morning I woke up to Yahoo sending me three different emails for three different SQL injections that got me paid $9,000. And that's been the most amount of money that I've ever seen in the past 10 years of my life ever handed to me for something related to computers. So given that I had $9,000, like any other 20 something years old, I go straight to a car dealership, buy the car that I've always looked at through you know, driving by or online. I purchased it, came home, went into my room and I told myself, this is it. This is how I can make money. If I can wake up one day and be $9,000 richer, there's gotta be a way to make more money. Maybe not today, but in three years, I could probably do a lot more than just a vehicle. So how did I get here? Well, there's a couple of things we can do, and I think a lot of these are still very valuable. The number one thing is, I was on Twitter. I was very, very active on Twitter, whether it was asking questions on Twitter, contacting other hackers for help on Twitter, or just simply following all the top hackers and reading all their blog posts and understanding how they did the, the things they did and also setting up the goal to find the same vulnerability as them just so I can learn how they did it and be able to say, okay, I learned this one thing, let's move on to the next thing. So as an example, like I said, I wanted to get an RCE. The day Image Magic dropped their RCE vuln uh, four or five years ago, I wanted to replicate it. I knew I can get it and within a few days, I was able to find an RCE on Yahoo. Uh, where I was able to exploit a magic image magic trick and get full a shell back to my box. That wasn't enough. There's so much more to learn. There's so many other things to learn. And doing all these online vulnerable apps like DVWA and anything that was a lab wasn't enough because in theory, those show you how to understand the vulnerability, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna get better at finding those bugs. So I spent a lot of my time on VDPs. I think one of the ones that I hacked on was localized. If you can go on my HackerOne profile, you definitely see me sending him some really, really crappy bugs. And I've already disclosed them just to show I started somewhere with nothing and I just use that as a learning experience to get better and better. And if you're not familiar with VDPs, VDP stands for Vuln Disclosure Program, where you submit a vulnerability to a program or a company for free and instead they acknowledge you and fix that vulnerability. I'm not saying that's the only way to learn, but at the time, the thing that worked for me was going after VDPs because it was free real estate. No other hacker was hacking on it. All the paid hackers, all the hackers that were after money were mostly going after the big programs like Yahoo. I wanted to learn versus they wanted to make money. So VDPs were great. I was learning a ton, but being in college, you always have to, always have to think two steps ahead. What am I gonna do after I graduate? What career am I going to choose? Or what jobs or companies I'm going to look at? So I started applying to a ton of jobs. I applied for a lot of big tech companies. I also have bug bounty programs and every single one of those companies ended up rejecting me. I didn't either have the qualifications, didn't understand WebSec enough, or I just didn't know how to break into that uh, sector or whatever you wanna call it. So I decided to get some books, understand the, now that I understand the attacker mentality, it was time to understand the engineer mentality. How do they fix the, these bugs? How do I explain to other people how to fix a bug that I found? Because that also becomes a part of doing bug hunting. So at some point, I ended up coming across a really cool vulnerability on Hulu, on one of their assets. I sent them a report, they got back to me, and a year later, they opened up a position for an application security engineer, where I referenced to my vulnerability in my email and put it on my resume, ended up applying for the job, and I was offered a position to work with their team because of that experience that I had with them with their bug bounty program. But eventually, after working at Hulu for almost a year, I realized that Engineering wasn't my thing. I didn't like doing engineering work. I didn't like the defensive side of things. I wanted more. And if you look back at my Twitter, back in 2015, I was a big critic of HackerOne to the point that I would ask him like, hey, change this stuff. You have to move things forward. We have to change these things and make hackers better or make it better for hackers. 
So I reached out to Gilbert Alpma, co-founder at HackerOne, and I asked him for a serious meeting where I could go into their office. I would travel to two hours to meet with you guys. I want to meet in person and I want to give you real feedback and tell you guys some of the things that I think as an outsider you guys could fix. After I went in there, I criticized him and I felt really, really bad. I felt like I just went in there and just told him everything that was on my mind without offering a solution. And if you know me and you've seen any of my content and the things that I've done in the world, that is not me. So a few days later, I reached back out to you over and I'm like, hey, I'm so sorry for criticizing you guys. That's not what I was there for. Is there any way I could apply for any position at HackerOne and help you guys make those changes by being a part of the team that ends up doing these things? So I've told you my life journey. I've talked about how you know I moved to another country without knowing the language, tried to get into computers, uh, got into computer security, and eventually when I got a job doing hacking as a profession, something that I didn't mention earlier, my family ended up telling me like, hey, hacking isn't a real career. You're never going to make it anywhere. You just need to stop and go back to engineering. But there is a point to that. So if there's three things you're gonna take away from this talk, I want you to think about consistency, networking, and community. And I'll explain what I mean. Get involved, get in the community, make friends, learn from other people, reach out to other folks, try to understand the things that you don't understand. I'm not saying go and be pushy, but there's a ton of other people that have the same goals and the same interests as you do. So become a part of that community. Be consistent. You can't hack one day, put it away for a month, and go back to it. Life happens, I understand. Believe me, I've been there. But you have to stay consistent. Make a schedule. Tell yourself every week, between this time and this time, on these days, I'm going to dedicate to learning, hacking, whatever that is that you want to do. And stay on schedule. Stick to it. And last but not least, networking. As I mentioned, I've submitted a ton of books to a bunch of different companies. And the reason why I got a job, and that's the person that I personally believe in, is because I knew somebody at the company who had previously worked with me professionally to be able to use the things that I send them and believe that I actually have these credentials. The things that I put on my resume were real and not things that I just put on there to get past HR. And that person internally was actually the person that fought to make sure I got this position. So when you know people at a company because you have interacted with them with bug bounties, bone disclosure programs, that's definitely a plus. Put that to your advantage. And I want to close out this talk with, we don't know what we don't know. We don't know where this industry is going to go. We don't know what we're going to be in life in three to five years. But the one thing that I can tell you is, if you dedicate yourself and you give it all you have, you're going to look back at this moment, three to five years, and it's all going to be worth it. Well, I hope that this talk helps you get involved in bug bounties and gives you the motivation to want to get involved more with the community. And I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for listening to me.